15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let us take this time to pray that we may welcome God's wisdom and mercy into our lives so that we can be guided in using right judgment. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Dan Whiteside. Today, let us remember in our prayers Bobby Schmidt. In reverence for the liturgy, please check that you have silenced your cell phone and open your heart to God's grace. The Archdiocese of Chicago has issued guidelines for all churches to keep our congregation as safe as possible. Right before communion, our presider will explain more about your, how you will be receiving communion. Please stand. Christ, your 
Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me, your servant. Kings succeed my father David, but I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern, to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, not for riches, not for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there's never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one equal to you. The word of the Lord. Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. I have said, O oh Lord, that my part is to keep your words. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Lord, I love your commands. Let your kindness co comfort me, according to your promise to your servants. Let your compassion come to me, that I may live, for your law is my delight. Lord, I love your commands. For I love your commands more than gold, however fine. For in all your precepts I go forward, every false way I hate. Lord, I love your commands. Wonderful are your decrees, therefore I observe them. The revelation of your words sheds light, giving understanding to the simple. Lord, I love your commands. We know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you. <clears throat>
According to Matthew, Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again. And out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous, throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand these things? They answered, Yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember reading a story about a man who had gone around the world in his wheelchair. You can only imagine the sacrifice that he went through to accomplish this feat. We can only imagine the pain and the fatigue which he endured. Putting his life aside, it took him 26, over 26 months to do it. You can only imagine how all of his life had to be put aside to do this. At times he was even in danger. What was his motivation to do it? Simply to show that a person with disabilities in a wheelchair could do something like that. It is not impossible for something, for somebody like that to do that. He showed people that it, that it is possible, and that all things are possible. You know, in various ways, we hear about people who do, who accomplish incredible heroic feats, him going around the world in a wheelchair, maybe somebody swimming the English Channel. Somebody recently, during these last few months, I heard of somebody who rode their bike across the United States a couple of times. The amount of sacrifice that they have to go through, putting their life aside, the physical endurance, the pain that they may go through, the suffering of just simply the weather, their achy muscles that they go through is incredible, yet they want to accomplish their goal. Just like the guy who went around the world in his wheelchair, Rick Hansen. He wanted to accomplish it. And so he put up with it and didn't even consider the cost. Now Rick Hansen, the man in the wheelchair, he is a Canadian Paralympian. He is an Olympian who uh, um, is in a wheelchair. We often hear about other Olympic athletes who set their goals to get to the Olympics. And to do so, they're disciplined, they train, they're so focused on what they want to do, on their goal. And they put everything aside. Their whole life is focused on that. Their job almost has to feed into that if they're working. Their family has to feed into that. Their social life has to feed into that. And anything that doesn't fit that person who is preparing, they don't do that. If there are friends who want to do something that is not, doesn't uh, fit into those goals, then they don't see those, those friends anymore, do they? You might say that these Olympians, you might say that uh, the guy in the wheelchair, 
You might say other people who accomplish these big goals. They're a lot like the people in the parables that Jesus speaks tonight. Like the person who finds a treasure, digs it up, buries it in another field, sells all that he has so that he can have that one treasure, have that field. Gave up everything in order to have that treasure. Because that treasure is everything. Or the person who finds the pearl of great price, the, the pearl that nobody has ever seen before. It's so incredible, so, so uh, big. Sells all that he or she has in order to have that one pearl. Everything in their life is focused on having the treasure or having the pearl. It's much like these Olympians. Much like people who are trying to accomplish these goals. Everything becomes focused on getting that one thing. It could be an Olympic medal. It could be proof that a handicapped person can go around the world. It might be a treasure or a pearl. Whatever it is, people will focus their whole life in order to accomplish that goal, no matter the cost. But as Jesus is, is talking about the, giving us these examples and, and these parables, is he talking about athletic accomplishments in our lives? or monetary accomplishments in our lives? Is, is that what Jesus is trying to help us to do? He's trying to help us to have God within our life. He's not talking about having fame or power, but the treasure that Jesus is talking about is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God is, is not about, we know, it's not about territory and castles and and literal kingdoms. It's not about nations. The kingdom of God is also, it's not only, although it partly is about heaven, but it's not only about getting to heaven. That is not the only thing that faith is about. God's reign in our hearts today is what the kingdom of God is about. The kingdom of God is here and now, not just after we die. But it's in the here and now. It's how we live and breathe within God's grace. How we relate with God and see God's grace on a beautiful day such as today. Or even on a lousy day. It's God's grace within our lives. God's grace within our homes. Our family, our faith is not just about heaven. But it's about how we enjoy God's grace right now. We daily seek to satisfy our material and our physical needs. We always are working. We, we have our jobs. We have things that we do in order to make sure that we have food, that we have shelter, that our families are taken care of as well. We take care of all of our physical needs, and that's natural. That's for our physical survival. But we also have a soul. That's what Jesus is addressing. We also have a spiritual part of our life that is just as important as the other parts. Could you imagine your life if you did not have family? Could you imagine your life if you had, did not have friends? Could you imagine your life if you, if you didn't have any kind of purpose, things that you wanted to accomplish in your life? Imagine your life if there was no God. Not just that you didn't relate to God, but there is none. There is a spiritual part of our life that is just as active and just as important as the other parts of our life, our social part of our life, our physical part of our life. The problem is we take care of those other parts sometimes first, but we take care of the spiritual, maybe, with less urgency. But we feed the spiritual part. Jesus is encouraging us. We feed it by being in God's presence. We feed it by receiving God's grace. By being engaged with God. By spending his time in prayer and such. Jesus is saying that in having a fulfilled soul, having a fulfilled spirit, 
that in order to do that, we need to allow God's great, God's kingdom, God's reign, to grow within our hearts and to make that a priority. The reason he speaks these parables is he's saying the person who found the treasure, that became the priority. The person who found the pearl, that became the priority. He's saying the kingdom of God, God's reign within your heart, is a priority, which we need to focus a lot on, even to form the rest of our lives around, our family life, our social life, all the things that we do. Just as an Olympian makes sacrifices to be an Olympian, so we're called to live our lives in certain ways, just as well. As the Olympian focuses on the Olympics and their skills, so we focus on that, on that as well. In terms of our own faith life, we pray and we talk with God. We reach out to others who are in need. We respect others and withhold our own selfish judgments upon others. And we make God important in our lives, the most important thing within our lives. We might say that Jesus calls us to be spiritual Olympians. But sometimes we may think that there is a cost. We don't want to do something because it will cost us something. Just sitting here in church means you're not doing something else. Not spending time in prayer, or spending time in prayer, costs you the time of doing something else in your daily life. Reaching out to maybe buy some things for the food pantry, to reach out to those in need, that costs you a few bucks out of your grocery. Yet, once we recognize that we have God, when we have God in the center of our life, all things begin to fall into place. St. Paul mentions this in the second reading. He says, for those who love God, everything works out for their good. Everything. Once we have God in the center of our life, all things begin to work for our good. Once we have God in the center, we are not so much trapped by the values of the world because we're, we're caught by the values of God. We're not so much trapped worrying about what somebody else may say about us because all that matters is what God says about us. Jesus is encouraging and inviting us to give our full self to God so that we can walk in His light. Once we find that our greatest good is God, and once we have found that Him is our treasure, then God makes you the richest person in the world if we'd only let him. We stand together and profess our faith in our Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the and he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to the judge of living in the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God, who calls us by name and leads us to life, we call to mind our needs and the needs of our neighbors around the world to our generous and caring God. Our response to the petition is, guide us by your spirit, O Lord. Guide us by your spirit, O Lord. 
all members of the church have the wisdom to discern what is of lasting value and reveal the presence of the kingdom of heaven by faithfully living the gospel, we pray. Guide us by your spirit, O Lord. That the leaders of our nation may govern with wisdom as they strive to foster peace and justice, serving the needs of all those who entrusted to them, we pray. Guide us by your spirit, O Lord. That all those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, especially those who fight for the unborn, victims of AIDS, the poor, and those on death row, may be strengthened in their commitment to, the, to justice, we pray. Guide us by your spirit, O Lord. That those in any need receive from the storehouse of God's treasure, we pray. Guide us by your spirit, O Lord. That like Solomon, may grow in wisdom and understanding to use these gifts to continue to build up the kingdom of God, we pray. That is by your spirit, O Lord. That the sick know healing and comfort through their caregivers, especially Don Sherlock and those who are infected with or recovering from COVID-19, as well as those on the parish prayer list, we pray. That is by your spirit, O Lord. That the souls of the faithful departed may be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom, especially William Marcia, Camille Buffalino, Baby Justin, as well as those who have died from COVID-19. We pray. That is our spirit, O oh Lord. O God of wisdom and understanding, you plan in our heart, plant in our hearts the desire for your kingdom. We ask you to hear these prayers that we might live with you forever in your kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Yes, Lord, as we have just proclaimed, you are holy indeed. Truly, you are the fountain, the source of all life and of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread into his hands. Giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God, In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we do celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember and bless your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop, and with the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the many ages, that we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We approach our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. And Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Just a reminder that uh, as we do come forward to communion, an usher will cue you to uh, leave your pew to come forward to communion, um, uh, maintaining a single file line as you do go forward with a, a six feet spacing uh, between you and the person in front of you. Uh, the usher will also uh, sanitize your hands or uh, offer a squirt your hands, uh, so to speak. Um, as you do come forward to communion, uh, please uh, receive communion in, in, in your hand only. Uh, we are not yet authorized to uh, give communion on the tongue. Uh, and then once you've 
walk uh, six feet away from your convening minister, uh, then uh, you can uh, pull your mask down or to the side and, and consume the Eucharist, uh, and then replace your mask again. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of you to enter into my word, but only say the word, and my soul shall be you.
This Mass is the Mass that we are recording to put online and for those who uh, are attending Mass uh, in their homes and cannot receive the Eucharist in person, a prayer and act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most sacred, most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come and let at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we have consumed this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. In our announcements, uh, as you may know, we are celebrating weekday Masses uh, according to this following schedule. On Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings, those three days, we celebrate morning Mass at 6.30 a.m. On Tuesday and Thursday mornings, we celebrate at 8.30 a.m. Just as on, on weekend Masses, you must register in advance to attend a particular Mass by going to our parish website stmarybg.org. The Sacrament of Reconciliation will be available next Saturday from 8.30 till 10 a.m. Again, please see the parish website to sign up for a time. We continue to need more volunteers to help to serve as greeters and sanitizers for our church activities. We also need extraordinary ministers uh, of communion. Volunteers uh, should be between the ages of 16 and 65-ish. <laughs> That's been fun. Um, they should, you should be in good health and without pre-existing medical conditions. I know we've been making that announcement. We've been having a number of wonderful turnout of volunteers for our weekend Masses uh, and for our day, weekday Masses as well. Anything we do, actually, in church, we have to say anything we do in this whole property, we have to sanitize afterwards. Uh, and so, this, starting this coming month in August, we're going to be making up First Communion, Confirmation, uh, with a number of different ceremonies. We'll be celebrating two Confirmations, three First Communions, and with special Masses and such. And then also the weddings are starting to happen again. All of these we need to greet and sanitize after each of those celebrations. And so we do need a tremendous amount of, of uh, helpers, and if you uh, can help out, help out. Uh, those are oftentimes on, uh, they're great times, Saturday afternoons and Sunday afternoons. Um, but it's a tremendous help. Uh, so if you are able to do so, uh, please go to our, our parish website and you can see a place where you can, you can sign up to, to help out with those. Our St. Vincent de Paul Society, who runs our food pantry and other charitable giving, uh, they have their annual golf outing and dinner. This year they can't have the dinner because of the pandemic, um, because, we, because the crowd is too big. Um, but they are having the golf outing, uh, and it's going to be on uh, Monday, August 10th. Related to that, there's a raffle, and the mailing for the raffle went out. I received it, I believe, today. So. It should be arriving uh, in people's homes uh, uh, these days um, that we're going through right now. Uh, please, since uh, their income is going to be down because they don't have the income of the dinner and such, which is really a fundraiser for them, if you would, uh, uh, please purchase uh, some raffle tickets for that and then send them. There's a self-addressed there's a self enclosed envelope. Um, please uh, buy some raffle tickets and return to them. It's a way that you are part of this, that ministry of, of helping out in the pantry, 
Uh, they help out people during the week and during the month, people who, who call and say, I'm struggling with my rent. I'm struggling with other bills. I'm struggling with my electric bill and such. Uh, I know we all are as well. Uh, but if you do have some extra uh, and you can help out, uh, please uh, consider uh, buying uh, those raffle tickets or even making an extra donation to the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Finally, as we uh, uh, finish our Mass this evening, uh, please remain in your pews uh, during the closing hymn uh, until your usher or greeter uh, directs you to leave. Uh, we leave in the same orderly way in which we, we came in. Uh, we will exit starting from the back pews uh, and using the markers on the floor to make sure that we are keeping a six foot distance between us. If you uh, did not or did not have the opportunity to drop off a, a parish contribution on the way in, there are uh, brown collection boxes as you leave church in the vestibule as well. Um, we thank you. It's great. It's been great to be able to celebrate Masses. Uh, to be honest, I don't know if you felt it, but I have felt stiff these first few weeks. And uh, it's, feel, it's starting to feel more, more regular again. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll continue along those lines and, and uh, we'll be a little bit more certain about everything that we're doing. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God rest within us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.